the term designer babies is, is used. I, I think it's more of a kind of tabloid description, but we know what we mean. Where people, where babies are then having screened for certain genetics and certain genes are, taking, are taken out or eliminated or played with. Do you think that science is playing God or do you think that's actually where we need to get to as a species, so thereby eliminating certain illnesses, diseases? I think it's hard to find an objection to eliminating diseases. So I think as long as that's used not for making designer babies, but for um, screening against hereditary diseases, it seems to me that that's really hard to object to that. Um, Richard, sorry to yeah, interrupt. Yes. Do you not think there's a moral conundrum there? Because it kind of depends where you draw that line, doesn't it? For example, if you have a baby that's, I don't know, has a higher risk of cancer. Now, I, I have a, a, a young son. I wouldn't want him to have, have a higher risk of cancer. But if I could then, you know, select him from a number of fetuses and discard the others, wouldn't that be maybe perhaps too far going in that direction? Well, I don't think necessarily so. Um, I suppose the way it might work would be something like this. In IVF, in, in vitro fertilization, um, a, a woman is um, given hormone treatment to superovulate, so she gets maybe a dozen eggs. And the, do the dozen eggs are all in, in a Petri dish. And what happens at present is that the doctor picks out one of these eggs at random. One of the, well, they, they all get fer fertilized if they can. Picks out one of the zygotes at random and re-implants it in the woman. Well, um, if the, instead of picking the zygote at random, you, you, you examine the genes, and this can be done when it reaches, say, the eight cell stage. So you, you let them develop to the eight cell stage. So they are eight cell embryos. And then you can take out one cell of the, of the eight and look at the genes of that, and it doesn't damage it. And you say, oh, okay, this one has the gene for hemophilia, and this one doesn't. Mm. Why on earth would you choose at, at, at random if you know that, some, that half of them have the, have the haemophilia gene and half of them don't? Obviously, it makes moral sense to pick one of the half, one of the 50% that do not have the gene for haemophilia, whatever it might be. I suppose the question that it brings into, and this is part of the other conversation we want to have with you um, in terms of atheism and religion, it brings into question... Uh, life. What is life? Is is a eight cell zygote life? Can it be discarded? Uh, is the, that that's where the moral conundrum comes in? I have no from. time for those, that kind of argument about is this a human human life or not? You or don't not? really? No. Why not? Well, because this eight cell zygote has no feeling. It has no nervous system. It has no capacity to suffer, no capacity to feel pain. Um, so that there's the mean, no, no moral difficulty at all in choosing. You're going to pick one of them anyway. You've got a, a dozen of them. And the, and the 11 that you, that you don't choose are going to be flushed away anyway. So um, you've already taken that moral decision in a way. It's a question of whether you choose one at random, or whether you choose the one that, that does not have the lethal or sub, sub no, But what I mean is once you've created that selection process, given that parents would want their children to be happy, but also clever and oh, that, charismatic. Now you've, now you've moved on to quite yes, a different yeah. topic. Yeah, you know, now yeah. you've moved on to... But that's where I was going with okay, it, right? Okay. So, and that's, I think, the core of Francis' yeah, question yeah. too, is if we've got the opportunity to select the optimum baby for us, are we not going to end up in a position where parents are encouraged to go down that path? Well, yes. Incentivized even. But you've changed the subject. And I, I, I was talking about the removal oh, of... of, yeah. of, of I'm, I'm not trying to catch you out. No, I'm no, trying no, to get no. To it's the a bottom. very interesting yeah. question. Yeah. And, and th then you can say something like, um, if it became possible to know that of these, of these dozen zygotes that we've got, um, some of them have a gene for musical genius mm -hmm. and some of them don't, um, we're nowhere near that at the moment, but, but if, if in the future that, that came about, then would you worry about parents who say, I want my child to, to be a great musician or a great composer, a great mathematician? Um, and that's very interesting. That's a more difficult moral dilemma. Um, if, if you object to that, then I might say to you, why do you object to that when you don't object to parents even forcing their child to practice the piano. See, you know, you, you haven't done your music practice today. Get on with it. You're supposed to practice, because the only way you will become a great pianist is by practicing six hours a day, whatever it is. 
Um, why would you think that is uh, okay when you would not think it okay to pick out a zygote from a Petri dish which contains a genetic predisposition to be a great musician? I'm not answering the question, but I'm saying that in a way, these sorts of moral questions can best be answered by comparison with other, other things. And I'm just comparing in this case, asking the sort of question a moral philosopher might, might ask. Um, what's the difference between encouraging a child to practice the piano and giving the child a head start by giving it the, the gene of the, of the ones that are available in the Petri dish in an IVF situation um, to become a, a musician? I suppose the problem with, with the, the answer to that is we come back into the realm of religion and morality because I think at the core of it is the idea that the creation of life is some kind of random miracle. It's supposed to be sort of, it's, it's not supposed to be is a word that I've introduced, of course, but if we, if we call it a miracle, um, it, it's supposed to be random to some extent. It's supposed to be down to chance. When, you, when we start interfering with that selection process, instinctively, I, I, don't, I can't explain it perhaps, I feel a certain, there's something off about that for me. I know that's not a very r rational or scientific argument, but I do think that's one a lot of people share actually. Well, it's not you? rational. It, no, I, mean, I, I, not, I acknowledge that. It, yeah. it sounds as though you're religious. It does, <laughs> it does, which I'm not interestingly, but I feel that that is probably how a lot of people do think about it. Yes. I suppose they do. Um, I think it's, it, more of a worry would be if some mad dictator, some kind of Hitler, started using these techniques and, and mandating, you know, the, the selection of blonde, blue-eyed, Aryan, you know, um, the sort of thing Hitler might have might have selected. Um, I was talking about more giving parents the opportunity to have their um, to do their IVF in a, in a non-random way. Um, it, to, I, I can sort of see that both ways. I don't, I, I, but on the other hand, if, it, if you have a dictator who says, we want to breed in this country a race of people who are, who are of such and such a type, um, that I think is deeply sinister. <laughs>